I need to put some moisturizer on these ashy ass, dry ass hands. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for uh, clicking on my channel. I appreciate you guys so much. If you're new to this channel, my name is Viosa and I am also Viosa MUA on Instagram as well, same as here. So welcome to my channel if you're new and I'm welcoming everybody to my channel. I pretty much do makeup tutorials, sometimes some hair tutorials. So I was planning on filming one week straight before going on vacation so that when I am on vacation, I had videos to post for you guys but I actually pulled a muscle on my neck or had a pinched nerve. The doctors can't really tell whether it's a pinched nerve or pulling a muscle, but I couldn't move my neck, like not even this much. And you know, when I do my makeup, I have to move my face a certain way. So I couldn't film videos for one straight full week. And then right when my neck started to feel slightly better, I had to travel to Florida. I was gone for eight days. And then when I came back from Florida, I had a bunch of uh, actual work to do. So I wasn't able to sit at home and film. So I was literally itching to film videos and I'm just really inspired by spring right now and spring colors. So I decided to do this yellow gold peachy look for you guys with a nude lip. And I really hope you guys enjoy this video because I really enjoyed filming it. I'm obsessed with the way that it came out and I'm going to continue filming more spring looks like this unless you guys don't want to. So don't be shy to comment and let me know if you want to see more spring colors, more fun looks like this because I'm really inspired by now to do more of these bold bright colors. And yeah, so if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, please subscribe and the main key important thing is to hit the bell button that way you get notifications when I post new videos because uh youtube is trying to be like instagram and is playing us so they're hiding our videos you won't be able to see the new videos unless you are subscribed and have hit the bell button so that you can get notified when i post a video if you want to see how i did this spring beautiful look then please keep on watching i've already moisturized my face and my under eyes and now i'm going to use a primer that i've never tried before it is by smashbox and it is called the photo finish radiance primer and I'm just gonna be using a dose of colors flat brush to apply this all over the face. This is going to give my skin a nice golden glow. I already tried this on the back of my hand and so I kind of know exactly what kind of finish this has. That's why I wanted to try this because I really want my skin to look super glowy today. I'm a lot darker because I was on vacation for a week. Um, although my face is not as dark as my body because I was covering my face with a hat and huge sunglasses. So I actually had to figure out a darker foundation for my skin. So now on the LC Micro Silk Foundation, I am warm ivory. Typically I'm vanilla in the winter, sand in the summer. And what I mixed in my foundation here is I mixed about three drops of this Laura Geller um, illuminating drops in the color Gilded Honey. So Laura Geller has this famous Gilded Honey pressed um, highlighter, like a powder highlighter, and they just came out with a liquid form. So everyone's obsessed with Gilded Honey. It was one of those, it was one of those highlighters that every huge beauty blogger used to rave about. That's all they used for many, many years. And so Laura Geller decided to put it in a liquid form since liquid drops are so in right now. Let's see, I'm gonna have, I think, an overall glow. So I'll be using the same brush that I always use, and this is the G2 by Morphe. And in stippling in motion, as always. If you're new to my channel, I always use this brush to apply foundation with. Um, I'm not really like a beauty blender girl. I only use beauty blenders to apply my concealer and to set my concealer. I really love how this brush makes my foundation look. You always want to make sure that you get foundation um, near the ear, even on top of the ear, because when your hair is up into a ponytail or a bun like this, you don't want your ear to be a lot wider than the rest of your face. I'm loving the way this color looks with my tan. These Laura Geller drops, you can mix them um, with your foundation like I did, 
You can put them just on the high points of your face, your nose, your collarbone. You can also mix a few drops of this with your moisturizer, like your body moisturizer, and then put it all over the body. That's also nice too. It gives you a nice glow. And I always do whatever's on my brush, I always do on the eyelids, just to kind of blend everything and have like this nice even canvas. Because you know, everyone's eyes have like little veins that pop through and just, you know, discoloration. Just putting a little bit more foundation just on the area where the dark sunspots are. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm not gonna do concealer or anything on top because I feel like it covered it pretty well. I can still see them a little bit, but I think I can deal with that. All right, now that the foundation is on, let's move on to some concealer. I also had to switch my concealer to a darker concealer and I'm using Medium Ginger Concealer by NARS. My Shape Tape Concealer was gonna be way too light now that I'm tan. I tried it the other day and I was like, oh no. All right, and let's blend the sound. I do, whenever I do my concealer, I always do one eye at a time. Um, I feel like if I were to do concealer, concealer, and then blend it out and then set it, by the time I'm done blending out one eye and setting it with powder, the other one's gonna crease. So I always like to do one eye at a time. So I've already damped my beauty blender. I always use a damp beauty blender. I never use a dry beauty blender. See how this concealer just kind of blends with the rest of my face? Now I'm just taking Too Faced Peach Perfect setting powder. I don't really bake. I just set the concealer and that's it. Like there's no need to, um, for me specifically, there's no need to bake and then wipe off the product. Just make sure that before you set your concealer with powder, make sure that you've blended out all the little creases of the concealer. Pretty much all concealers crease, some crease more than others, but just make sure you blend it out first with this beauty blender and then um, set it right away. I mean, look at the difference between the dark circle and with it. The concealer covered and this concealer is actually not as full coverage as shape tape I'm used to the full coverage of shape tape this one's I would say is more of a medium creamy finish this was like my holy grail before um, shape tape came out so now I'm just gonna take a bigger beauty blender and just set the center of my face with this powder very lightly. And what this does is it really makes the pores look smoother. So it sets, makes the pores look smoother, but also um, makes that area brighter looking. Let's move on to contouring my face, shall we? You know how I always use MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Medium Dark to kind of contour my face? Well, now that I'm darker, this is actually not gonna be dark enough for contouring. So what I'm gonna do with this powder is I'm gonna lightly put this all over my face to set the rest of my foundation. And then I'm gonna contour with a different product. And you may be wondering, well, she put those liquid um, illuminating drops on her foundation to give her an overall glow. Why is she putting powder now on her face? Isn't that gonna modify her skin? Well, this powder is actually not matte. This powder has more of a mineralized finish. It doesn't give you a matte finish. I always bring stuff down to my neck, whether it's like a little bit of powder, or a little bit of bronzer, just so everything kind of looks uniformed. All right, so now that we've set the entire face with powder, and this powder, for anyone who's never used it but is interested in using it, this powder has like a light to medium coverage, so it's not that heavy. And now to contour my face, I'm gonna use Cabo Matte Bronzer by uh, Galactic. It is one of my holy grail kind of go-to bronzers. And for this, I'm gonna use an angled Dose of Colors contouring brush. When I contour my cheekbones, I always bring the contour to the ear. See how I'm grazing the ear? Cause you never want to see like a gap here of no product cause it just looks unfinished. 
something I always do around the hairline. It just makes the forehead appear smaller because Lord knows my forehead ain't small. So if you have a smaller forehead, you're lucky, first of all. Second of all, you don't really have to contour this area because contouring the entire hairline like I'm doing, it gives the appearance of a smaller forehead. So let's move on to my favorite product that I brag about. And honestly, if they discontinue it, I'll be so sad because I haven't seen any other company make a product, product like this. But don't hate me, it is really, really expensive. And they sent this to me, but if I were to buy this, it would really hurt my feelings to spend so much money. I think it's like $65. It is the Givenchy Translucent Powder, and it comes in like four colors. As you could see, it's mixed, and then obviously when you mix it and pour it out, the colors all mix together. They come in different shades. My favorite shade is the number seven, Voila Rosé. So this is what it looks like. It from, ooh, just spilled it. I take like a huge fluffy brush, and I just kind of go all over the face with it. And I think you guys won't really be able to see what this looks like on camera because it's one of those things that it's so finely milled and such a light product that you'll only really see the effects of this if you were next to me in person. But anytime I wear this, I get so many compliments. People are like, oh my God, your entire face is like glowing. It doesn't really trans translate that much in pictures or on camera, but in person, ooh, it's so good. Next, I'm going to use a new highlighter that just launched a little while ago. It is called Forbidden by Verimona, and this is what it looks like. How cute is the packaging? Um, so this is what it looks like. It is just it's such a pretty gold, as you can see. And I actually am friends with the owner of Verimona, Letty. She is one of the sweetest down-to-earth human beings, and I'm just so proud of her and so happy for her. And the, she came out with two highlighters, this one and another one that has more of a pinky undertone. This one has a gold undertone. So um, she also came out with this dual-ended brush, and I actually got foundation all over this top one, but I used this to blow my body. And then the smaller one, I'm going to use for the highlight. I prefer this kind of brush over over a fan brush. I've always been this kind of girl when it comes to applying highlighter. I'm not really crazy about fan brushes, so I'm kind of glad that she came out with this type of brush and it's dual ended. So if you want a bigger one for the face or the body or the smaller end. So the smaller end, I always use for the face. And look at this. Woo, so pretty. Whenever I'm tan, I really like to use more uh, gold highlighters. Put some right above the brow. Put it on the nose. Cupid's bow, as always. Cupid's bow highlight always makes your lips look fuller. And who doesn't want fuller lips? And right in here. I don't actually dip the brush in and add more to the chin, just whatever's on the brush. Oh my god, look at this highlight, you guys! So beautiful. I'm gonna use the Adore Blush Duo by Jouer because it has those like peachy bronzy colors and I'm just gonna dip my brush pretty much in both of them. And again, just using the same brush that I use for contouring, the Dose of Colors Angled Brush. Look how pretty that is. Look at the contour side and then look at the blush side. This adds a nice peach look to it. Make sure you blend your highlighter and blush together so there's not look like no line here. So just, you know, as you're applying your blush, just kind of marry it with the highlighter. You guys, I miss filming so much. I'm so happy to be filming again today. I'm actually filming two videos back to back, so yeah, more videos coming your way. Are you guys ready to see which palette I'm gonna use for the eyes? You guys are gonna die over this palette. It is the Gilded Glam Reflections palette. I'm gonna be using this gold right here because it is screaming my name. 
So I swatched it and it was really creamy and bright, but you know, it's my first time trying this palette, so I'm afraid that it might not look as bright on my eyes. So what I'm going to use is a gel liner as my base for the area where, where I'm going to put this gold. And this is called Lit AF, Lit as fuck by uh, Morphe. Um, these are actually new gel liners, so I'm just going to spread it really lightly on the lid. But first, I'm going to use Painterly Paint Pot all over the lid. So whenever I do painterly, I always use the same brush, 252 by MAC because it's a big brush and it kind of spreads the product really evenly all over the lid. And I go all the way up to the brow bone. You know how some people do concealer right here under the brow bone? I actually just do the primer and it does the same job. Now I'm going to put on that uh, gold eyeliner. Let's hope this doesn't go like all the way left. So with gold, I'm just gonna focus it right, no, it's going on really smooth, but I'm sure because it's a liner, it dries fast, so I have to work with this really fast. The brush that I'm using is Stephanie Nicole S1. Whenever you're working with like a cream product, especially if it's an eyeliner, you wanna make sure you work quite fast with it. Even though it's pretty light, it's not really like showing as much as I thought it was going to show, but it's going to do the job for what I want it to do. I'm going to use a Sigma Medium Sweeper E54 brush, and I'm going to dip it in this color right here. My neighbors upstairs, they must have kids because all I hear is feet running around. I hope that you guys can hear it in the background. Whenever I try a new product on camera, I'm always like, please, Lord God, let this work. Because then I have to stop filming, wash it off. But no, I'm just packing it on, as you can see. I'm not doing any sort of sweeping. I'm just doing patting motion, as you could see. My God, you guys, this looks even better in person than it does on camera. Because I'm look I have a mirror in front of me and I have the monitor to my left. And what I'm seeing in the mirror even better than on camera. I'm gonna take a Smith 230 blending brush and I'm going to pick up peachy color right here and I'm gonna kind of use that it as a um, transition color. This is gonna be kind of like a colorful look. So with this orangey peachy color, I'm going to do the outer corner, right? And then I'm gonna go into the crease and I'm gonna bring it into the inner corner. I want it to be like a halo effect. Spring has got me feeling like color. Like for spring, I want to do a bunch of colorful spring looks. You know, to be honest, you guys, I really love neutrals. Like I love earth tones. I love browns. I like I love warm tones. But there's only so many warm tone brown looks you can do. I don't want my entire Instagram page or every video here on YouTube to have neutrals. But it's really, like I love doing color too, don't get me wrong, but I don't really ever wear colorful looks out. But I'm going to try to do more colorful looks this spring, at least for content for you guys. So pretty much what I'm doing now is just building on that peachy orange color but also blending at the same time. So whenever I'm done applying the, the majority of the color on the crease, then whatever's left on the brush, I'm just kind of blending. Now you see how much the gold pops once you do a contrasting color. Now I'm gonna take this light color right here. Now you guys see why I don't do my eyebrows first like most people do, because like right now, I would have to be so careful around my brows if I did them first. I always do my brows last, always. And then I'll do a little bit of that brow bow color just on the inner corner, just to kind of brighten that area. But like the inner corner, not like the tear duct inner corner, but all of this area right here to the brow bone. See what I mean? Because I put the primer there, so I wanna make sure that I'm covering the primer with eyeshadow. This color right here, um, it's hard to see what it looks like on camera, 
but it's like this greenish gold. Like it's a gold with a green undertone. So I'm gonna take a pencil brush and put that right on the inner corner of the eye. Oof, do you see that? Oh my God, it's so beautiful. It is so metallic-y and like this light, light gold. Like when you compare it to this gold, it almost looks white, but in person, it is blind. I love me an inner corner highlight. Guys, I found a new nude pencil. You know how I always talk about the MAC uh, NC15 and W20 chromographic pencil and they've discontinued it and you can't find it anywhere? So I found a new nude pencil. It is called um, Carnet, K-A-R-N-A-T by Zoeva. And it is amazing. Do you see how amazing this is? So I bought a few pencils from Zoeva. They're also half the price as MAC um, eye pencils. And this one reminds me exactly of Teddy. It is a brown with a gold flex and it's called Glance. So taking this pencil and just doing the bottom lash line, taking a pencil brush and just kind of blending that out. And then the same uh, peachy color that I used for the crease, I'm gonna add to the bottom lash line as well. God, my eyes twitching like crazy. Do you see this? I really need to go to the doctor and find out why that is. So anyway, whenever I'm doing brighter colors like this, I like to do dark there somewhere, whether it's um, smoke out the bottom lash line or a winged liner. All right, gonna use a Lash Pull Mascara by um, LC Cosmetics. My mascara just really makes such a difference. So I finished the other eye and eyebrow off camera to save time. And now I'm gonna do this ratchet ass eyebrow on camera because look at the difference, you guys. I mean, should I get my eyebrows microbladed? That's the question. I struggle with that every day. Like, do I get it done? Do I get a tattoo on my face? Or do I just take 10 minutes to do my eyebrows every day? So let's do these brows. I'm going to show you guys how I do them for anyone that's new to my channel and hasn't ever seen me do my brows. It does take a while, but we're going to do this. So I do soft brown dip brow by Anastasia with a 266 angled brush by MAC. And the reason why I like to use a pomade, like a cream pomade for the brows is because it really fills in these sparse areas where there should be brow hairs, but there isn't. So it just gives my brow like a nice, even look. And I always start with like the middle of the brow right here where there's no hair, where I need the most color. So I'm pretty much like outlining my brow first, the bottom portion of the brow. And then whatever's left on the brush, I brush it towards like the inside part of the brow. I don't know if I'm really describing it with words properly. And then I just take a spoolie and kind of brush the product around. And then whatever's left on my brush, I like to go at the beginning of the brow because the, like the front of the brow, I don't want it to be too dark. And then I'm gonna brush the brows down. I trimmed my brows actually, there's, so there's not a lot of long hairs. I think I trimmed a little bit too much actually. The beginning. Because naturally the beginning of the brows are thinner and less hair. So that's why you don't wanna make the front of the brow as dark as the rest. You ain't nobody till you got somebody. That Demi Lovato song I love, but I hate that sentence. You ain't nobody till you got somebody. Like, no, I was perfectly fine when I was single. And now that I'm married, it doesn't make me a somebody. So that's what she's saying. Like you need to have somebody in order to be somebody. Uh, I disagree with that. So tell me you love me. I need someone no days like this I do. All days like this. 
so tell me you love me I need someone and we're moving on to lips this is nectar 21 lip pencil by sorme and it is just a perfect nude like really really nude pencil you guys know i'm a ride or die nude lip pencil by jar cosmetics it's called nude lip pencil um but that one for the look that i'm going for is a little bit too dark so i'm using this this is like the most nude that it gets I just have chapstick on my lips if you're wondering uh, what's on my lips already and then I'm gonna use dose of colors bear with me it is a liquid lipstick and it is probably one of my most all-time favorite liquid lipstick and you'll see why like do you see this color can it get any more perfect like this is the most perfect nude and speaking of I'm running out so I need to get some more this lipstick doesn't really even need a liner, but I just did it to kind of make my lips look fuller. But you see how like the peachy bronzy blush goes perfect with this lip and this eye makeup. I mean, I'm really loving this look. I don't know about you guys, but if you like it, I would say give this video a thumbs up, comment, let me know if you'd like to see more spring fun colors like this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And, you know, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your cousins, tell your whole neighborhood. And, you know, share my videos if you want on Facebook and anywhere else that you can share. Because don't we want to have this whole huge family on uh, YouTube? I want to. Don't you want to be a part of a huge family? Um, also, the key is to hit the bell button so that you get a notification whenever I post a new video. Because YouTube is now doing what Instagram is doing they're putting um, like they're hiding videos so you can't really find the videos um, so subscribing and clicking the bell button is key if you want to not miss any of my videos and I'll see you guys next time